AJ Styles on a TNA return, say his name and he appears, Joe Hendry potentially to WWE, and... Jeff Hardy has returned to TNA. Hello, I'm Ollie Davis. This is the Wrestle Talk News. I'm in the office all alone on a Saturday, so please don't expect the usual high octane style of editing you're used to, but uh, do expect plenty of fluffs because I'm just going to do this in one unedited take. There's no editors here today. I'm fluffy. I'm fluffing myself right now. All the fluffs. Uh, right, so Jeff Hardy, as reported, returned at last night's TNA Against All Odds pay-per-view in the main event. But not not to help his brother retain or stop getting beaten up. Uh, first it was Moose and Broken. Broken! Yes! Matt Hardy in the main event, Moose defending his championship. And... There was a lot of interference. Uh, Alicia got involved. Rebby Hart took her. Uh, Rebby Hart? Who's Rebby Hart? Rebby Hardy took out uh, Alicia. But then Matt Hardy accidentally speared Rebby through a table, letting Moose retain. Moose is probably going to hold on to his title for quite some time, maybe until Bound for Glory. He's been unbeaten for ages now. But then uh, the rest of the system, who successfully retained their tag titles against the Nemeth brothers earlier that night, came out. They start beating up Matt Hardy. The system are standing tall. You know, well, you know, um, if Jeff's going to return, he should probably come out now. But no, there is Joe Hendry. Joe Hendry comes out. And uh, yeah, he gets beaten up. Um, and then, right, OK, here's Jeff Hardy. And he just stands. He's there. He poses. He doesn't do his little finger dance, unfortunately. But he does have a custom chair. And he runs down to the ring. He takes out the system and stands tall with uh, with Matt Hardy, his brother, and the Nemeth brothers. So that's a weird two-brother act in there. And Joe Hendry, which is, that's, that's a weird visual, isn't it? Who would have guessed that at the start of this year? Um, of course, Jeff Hardy's contract expired with AEW on the same day, on Friday the 14th of June, uh, which allowed him to become a free agent and appear wherever he wanted. Matt Hardy, his brother, had left AEW back in April, I believe, when his contract similarly expired. They just couldn't work out terms to agree. The Hardys in AEW were, to be honest, a bit of a bust because... Matt Hardy came in during the pandemic. A lot of that broken stuff didn't quite gel with the AEW audience, which preferred things at the time a bit more realistic. And then when Jeff came in, it felt like they were building them to a tag title run against the Young Bucks, just like they had with their brilliant feud in Ring of Honor back in 2016. Tempest isn't here to fact check me, so it's 2016. And then Jeff got a concussion, and then he got a DUI arrest, which sort of put him out and indefinitely suspended for the better part of a year. And the Hardys, ever since then, just, they felt a bit frustrated in AEW because they weren't getting pushed. But you could understand why they weren't getting pushed, because they were either injured or arrested. Um, Jeff, of course, had gone from WWE in late 2020. Two, I think one of those years it was certainly at the end of a year because of, he, he was acting weird so it was always a risky move for Tony Khan to pick up Jeff Hardy given his history but Jeff Hardy whenever he's released by one promotion another promotion will pick him up right away because he is that popular and charismatic and will usually generate some interest um I would argue that means he never learns from his mistakes because he's just rewarded with Another promotion taking him. And right now, it, it's TNA. How long this lasts, we don't know. We don't know how long Matt Hardy's contract is either. But the interesting thing here is the relationship with NXT, the pro prohibitive portal that's recently opened up that saw Jordan Grace appear um, at the NXT Battleground show and uh, have a match there as well, losing to Roxanne Perez. And on the same show against all odds last night that Jeff Hardy showed up, we had Jordan Grace issue an open challenge for her knockouts championship, which was answered by NXT's Tatum Paxley. So that relationship is still in play. And rather excitingly, it continues on Tuesday because Tuesday's episode of NXT is sort of centered around this match that Cody Rhodes announced on this week's NXT, which is a 25-man battle royal. The winner 
will face Trick Williams for the NXT Championship at Heatwave in July. Now, the way, surely this is going to be a sort of Rumble-style match. It's not just 25 men in the ring right from the start. First off, that's too many men. Too many men, too many men, too many men. Um, you won't get into a nightclub with all that, with all those blokes. You need some women in that queue. And you've got trainers on as well? What, what, what are you thinking? This isn't Rochester and Amadeus. We need smart shoes here. This is a classy establishment. But the, you will probably get entrances because it seems like we're going to have a few surprises. And you don't really get those surprises if they're just in the ring already when the match starts and the bell sounds. Cody Rhodes teased there'll be entrance from multiple locker rooms. So this could, of course, be WWE's main roster, Raw and SmackDown, but TNA as well. And actually, we've had a report from Fightful that says that the participants in NXT's 25-man battle royal for Tuesday have been decided. The majority of the people are already arranged, and some of the participants are expected to come from the main roster and TNA's roster. They're still finalising those names. So perhaps we could see Matt and Jeff Hardy appear in that battle royal. And maybe Jeff Hardy wins. So this TNA return for the Hardys could actually be a forbidden backdoor, title of your sex tape, to WWE via NXT. God, this is, this is such a confusing web of working relationships. Hopefully one of the other names, though, is Joe Hendry. Because his name has been said, and possibly he will appear. He was referenced on Monday's Raw, when at the, you know, say his name and he'll appear line, by Pat McAfee on commentary. And the crowd chanted for Joe Hendry when Cody Rhodes announced the uh, Battle Royal on the Tuesday. So... Fightful uh, have said that the commentator's recent references to Hendry were planned in advance and not a coincidence. So if WWE is sort of planning that stuff, perhaps Joe Hendry really is going to be one of those 25 competitors. In which case, it definitely should be a Royal Rumble style entrance, so we all get to pop when his entrance music starts. Uh, yeah, so that's all the sort of TNA cross. Just a few more results um, we had... Joe Hendry, actually, yeah, he lost with a steal. Woof, woof. CM Punk's best friend, uh, reportedly. I don't know what that's like now. He lost to Frankie Kazarian against all odds. It's a bit of an odd choice there. But the what I, we also had the SmackDown taping last night. Uh, well, from taping live broadcast from Scotland. And the Clash of the Castle pre-show as well, the sort of event, the media event, where Cody Rhodes very sweetly crowd-surfed with all the Scottish fans. So on uh, the episode of SmackDown with Cody Rhodes, AJ referenced Ring of Honor. He said Cody quit Ring of Honor. He quit New Japan. He said the forbidden names. It's crazy. But he wouldn't say AEW. He only referenced them in part. He said, and you helped start a company and you quit that too. And when AJ said, and you helped start a company. Of course, everyone knows that means AEW. And the Scottish crowd went, oh, it sounded like booze. I don't think it was booze. I think it was the Scottish accent going, wow, oh, naughty. Um, but yeah, but I, I don't think it would be booze. So AJ's referencing these other promotions on SmackDown. But at the Clash of the Castle media press thing, whatever it's called, uh, AJ referenced TNA. Michael Cole asked AJ Styles about the working relationship between NXT and TNA. And AJ said that uh, it's the, the TNA community. He didn't say that. That's just me. I wrote that as a joke to remind myself to definitely get that spot in. The crowd start chanting TNA. And AJ said he thinks it's the best of both worlds, which popped me because that was AJ's line, I think, in that song when they started doing dual-branded pay-per-views back in 2016-17. Um, and he said if he was running the show, that's what he'd do too. Uh, Coldaholic also asked AJ in an interview whether what his thoughts on that sort of TNA working relationship, and AJ kind of gave a vague answer about, yeah, it's great for the talent, it's great for everyone to cross over. But yeah, it really has got me thinking now with this whole AJ retires stip for Cody. 
If he doesn't win the belt, which you know, I don't think he will, perhaps AJ turns up in TNA. Do you want to see that? Let me know in the comments. God, that would be... That is not something I would have had on my 2024 predictions. Uh, TNA does look to be in good health, though, because one of the concerns after Scott Demore and all these other backstage creative names and long-term figures behind the scenes uh, was this idea that they haven't got any more dates announced post-early August. But in the Against All Odds pay-per-view last night, they uh, announced that TNA Emergence will be held in Louisville, Kentucky on August 31st, and TNA Victory Road will be held in Cleveland, Ohio on September 13th. So a pretty quick turnaround there for the uh, premium live events. If that, if if Emergence is a PLE, maybe it's a like a live show taping thing. Um, but both events will uh, air on TNA+. Plus. So TNA right now looks pretty healthy, which is surprising all things considered, all the, the big name departures backstage. The only other thing I wanted to mention was this report from PW Insider that WWE are looking to bring back a classic name from the past in, in their pay-per-views, which is Bad Blood. Bad Blood, of course, being the stage for the first ever Hell in a Cell match. That awesome match between Undertaker and Shawn Michaels that saw the debut of Kane. Uh, very important. So that was back in October 1997. So we're coming up to... Uh, an anniversary start 97 97 we're 2024 20, so we're coming up to the the 30 30 years 30 years since that um the name could be used for october's premium live event as of this year because wwe haven't announced the show names past bash at berlin i believe which is late august or early september and yeah then if you establish that now in three years' time, when it is the 30-year anniversary of Bad Blood, it's already revived. You don't have to go from a standing start. So exciting. Well, uh, please subscribe and everything, because we've got the brand new episode of Tables, Lists and Chairs going out a bit later today. What are the 10 best stipulations, I think it is? Best 10 stipulations of all time? That'll be a fun one. And go watch Survival Series right now, where we all try and name every King of the Ring tournament winner ever. That's live on Parts Unknown. Right now, there should be a link on screen. Click it. I've been Ollie Davis. Jam that jam. <laughs>